ninth I think and I've decided to pick up my camera this week and film a little bit. I have lots of knitting to share so I'm going to gather some of my projects and share what I've been working on. I've made a lot of progress on a few things, finished a few things so I thought it would be a good time to pick up my camera and share that because I am just plowing ahead and trying to knit 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 my heart out I have just been really inspired to knit lately. It is so beautiful today. I think it's going up to 12 degrees Celsius. I've even got a window open. I'm just kind of freshening up the house. It is Monday and so there are lots of things to be picked up from the weekend. I feel like I spend my Monday mornings just getting reorganized for the week. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm having a coffee and packing up because I need to run a few errands. But when I get back, I am going to tidy up and share some of my knitting with you. I'm back from running a few errands today. It's taken me a while and I had to pick up Camden at school because he had a fourth period spare. And I'm just about to put everything away and I wanted to share this. I found these at Costco last week. So I went back to get a few more. They are the Nespresso Starbucks coffee pods. The Nespresso maker is what I use to make my coffee every morning and I get so many questions about it. And I tried these last week and I love them. So I went back to get a couple more before they all disappeared. They're on for a really good price compared to what I normally get them for on the Nespresso website. But um, I just wanted to share because they're at Costco and I'm super excited. I'm just going to put the rest of my stuff away and I'm going to pull out some of my knitting to share with you guys. Time for some knitting. I wanted to share this finished object first. It is my Weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry, and I absolutely love how it turned out. I'm really happy with the yarn that I used. This is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the color Snowbound. And I started this quite a while ago, earlier last year, and I put it down a few times. I think I just kind of got a little bit distracted or maybe even a little bit bored but I'm really happy that I picked it up again and I finished it. It was not difficult. I think this is a pretty pretty good sweater if you are not a super experienced knitter. I found it very easy to read the pattern. 
I really love how lofty and lightweight it is, but it's a bit warm to wear it today. So I just wanted to share it and I've got some pictures on Instagram. I think I have a Ravelry page. I didn't really do any modifications. I don't think I did um, come to think of it. I did not do the, I think it's a tubular cast on that she asks for, I'm not sure, but pretty much everything else I did exactly as the pattern calls for. And I think I spoke about the amount of ease and the size that I decided to do in my last um, my last vlog. So if you're curious about how much ease, because it can be a very oversized sweater, you can check out my last video where I talked a bit about that. But I'm really, really happy with it. I am, I think I'm going to take it off the hanger so I'm not stretching it out and tuck it away in my closet. I love it. My second finished object is this beautiful hat from Clinton Hill Cashmere. It is called the Custom Slogan Hat using the Clinton Hill Cashmere yarn. Um, I didn't really have to use much of the white, but it was um, a two ball project. And my friend Eric picked up this yarn for me at the Clinton Hill Cashmere booth in New York at Vogue Knitting Live. And I really, really love this hat. I chose the word cashmere. I thought it was super cute and I love the black and white. I think it's going to look so good with any of my coats and anything that I wear. And I'm really, really happy with it. It was just a fun, quick project and I think it's really chic. I love it. The only thing I noticed about this project for me is that when I did the color work, my tension was really, really tight and I didn't notice it until I had pretty much finished the hat and I didn't want to redo it. But I did manage to block it and kind of stretch it a little bit so it fits and it looks okay. But this part was really, really tight on my forehead. So I'm glad that I was able to block it out. This yarn is so wonderful to work with. It blocked beautifully too. I just have to weave in the ends and that is that. I have acquired quite a few beautiful yarns in the last month or two, and I thought I would share. Um, the first one was totally inspired by my friend Mary Lisa from the Girl Meets Yarn podcast. This is a brushed Surrey DK from Blue Sky Fibers in the color Caviar, which is a beautiful black. I'm sure this is going to be a nightmare to um, to knit because my eyes are terrible and it's um yeah it's really fine and it's going to be hard to see on my needles but that's okay i was totally inspired by marilisa she had been knitting quite a few gorgeous hats and some berets and so i want to try making um the studio beret by church mouse yarns so that is what this is for i'm not sure if i'll get to it now that the weather is getting a lot warmer and beautiful but we will see over here, I was completely tempted. I had no restraint when Nice and Knit released their new pattern, the Decades Wrap, and all of these gorgeous kits to go with it. So I had to have this. I can't remember the name of the kit. It might have been the Gardener's. I think it was the Gardener's kit. But basically, um, it's a skein of fingering. This is the color Seaside. This is actually DK, it just has the wrong label on it. And this is in galvanized. And then there's a mohair. And you use the DK, the fingering, and the mohair to make this beautiful wrap. I think that's going to be one of my next new projects once I finish a little bit of uh, what I have on the needles right now. I've also been inspired by socks and I think I have Denise from Earth Tones Girl to thank for that. I have not watched all of her videos yet but I do have the pattern for her socks and I do plan on watching her um, her amazing YouTube videos on knitting two at a time socks and some of her tips and things. So I picked up this beautiful and simple Mondine. I got this one at the Knitting Loft. It is I think it's color 209. It's kind of like a salt and pepper color. 
I thought that would make a great basic pair of socks. And I also picked up this Shirley Bryan Yarns fingering in the color Dirty Martini. I thought this would make a super fun pair of socks too. So that is going in my sock basket. And when I was at the knitting loft with my friend Eric, I could not resist some of these beauties. I'm not even sure what my plans are for them, but this is my first skein of Cozy Posy yarn. It is, um, let's see, the color is Country Girl and the base is called Fancy. It is 70 2010 superwash merino, cashmere, and nylon, and it is so soft. And when I saw this, I just thought that if there was ever a skein of yarn that seemed to be like my colors, I don't know what it is. It's like, you know when you see something that you think is like, it's meant for you? I think this colorway was meant for me. It just has all the colors I love all together. So beautiful. I think I might make a really luxurious pair of socks with this, or I might save it and um, save it for a bigger project. I'm not sure yet, but I really love that. And these colors just drew me in. Eric and I were talking about some fingerless mitts and I thought, how beautiful would this be for fingerless mitts? And if I don't do that, I can make a gorgeous hat. So this is the Nice and Knit Worsted. This color is called Jetty. So soft. I love Nice and Knit yarns. And I don't remember how to say this actually, but this is who it's by. It's the Bedrock Collection. And this is the Melted Surrey. And the color is Dust. Absolutely beautiful. I was thinking this could even be a decades wrap because it's one fingering, one mohair, one worsted. So who knows if I love that pattern, that could potentially be a second one if I ever wanted to do that. So that is some of the yarn that I have picked up in the last little while. It's so beautiful, but I still have some works in progress I'm going to share because I'm not casting anything else on until I finish what I'm about to show you. My main work in progress right now is this sweater. It is the Ranunculus by Knit Cafe Midori. I really, really love this sweater. It is such a fun knit. Once I got past the initial kind of setup here and the beginning of the lace pattern, it has just been flying off my needles. I haven't even spent a ton of time on it other than you know, an hour here, an hour there, but I had cast this on, when did I cast this on? Quite a while ago, and I remember when my friend Meg and Christina from Chelsea Yarns were visiting Toronto, Christina actually tried to undo it for me and find a mistake because I think I was somewhere in this beginning area and my stitch count was completely off. So Christina ripped it back for me and I went to restart it recently and it was just a mess. I don't know if it was the mohair, it was the short rows. I just couldn't really, I couldn't really pick it up to a good place. And so I ripped it back completely. I frogged it and I restarted. And I think I did make one, I was off somewhere with my stitch count, but I managed to just work it out without ripping it back. I don't know what I did and I did the larger neck cast on, and I'm doing the short sleeve version, and I think I only have about an inch or two left to do on the body before I start the rib at the bottom, so I'm almost done. I really, really love this project. It is super quick um, on these larger needles with a fingering and a mohair. I am using, um, this is Chelsea Yarns Fingering. I believe it's a singles base. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's singles. And the color is Axon Provence. And I'm almost out of the mohair, also by Chelsea Yarns or Chelsea Lux Yarns. And this color is Boardwalk and it has this beautiful little touches of yellow in it. So it's just looking so pretty 
I really, really like this project and I'm almost done. So I'm really happy with it. I am just going to try and focus on finishing this this week and I will have a second sweater in a record amount of time for me. One other thing I should add is I've had a few people ask me if this is an easy pattern um, and if I would recommend it and they're waiting for my thoughts on it. I'm kind of, I'm not sure if I'm the best person to ask that because I feel like I'm a decent knitter and um, I'm pretty resourceful, but I have, I did mess up a couple times on this one and I'm not even sure what I did up here when I made the mistake. Sometimes I just have difficulties reading a pattern because I overthink it. And um, even though this pattern is really well written, there were a couple of spots where I had to replay it in my head over and over to make sure that I was reading it correctly. So I haven't heard anyone else talk about having issues with the pattern. The pattern is wonderful. And there are video, there's video support on YouTube for so many steps of this. They're all listed on the Ravelry page. So I think it was a great pattern, um, but I did have problems when I split for the sleeves. I made a mistake, but I think I just completely read the pattern incorrectly. And so if you are okay with trying things, um, looking videos up, asking a friend or going to a yarn shop to ask for help if you run into trouble or if you're an ambitious knitter and a resourceful knitter. I think this is definitely um, an easy project, but it might not be the best project for a brand new knitter. So I just wanted to share that because I had a lot of questions about it. I also picked up this beautiful book from the Knitting Loft when I went a few weeks ago. It is The 52 Weeks of Socks by Lina Magazine. I'm sure you have seen it all over Instagram. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful book. And I normally prefer vanilla socks, but I just could not resist this book. The photography is gorgeous. Just a really pretty book that I knew I would regret if I did not pick it up. So I've got this beautiful book and it's staying on my coffee table because it is just that pretty. And the only other project I am working on right now, a work in progress, is my scrumptious pearl sock, which I have shared before. I had shown the first sock was done. I'm just working on the heel flap of the second sock. And I've been neglecting it a little bit because I've been focusing on my ranunculus sweater, but I'd really like to get the heel, um, the heel flap and the gusset all done so that I will just have some easy bag knitting that I can just leave in the car or leave in my purse. Um, so I'm excited about that and I'm really motivated to finish that because there's another sock that I am so anxious to cast on. I've put it in my black leather clutch and it is this beautiful yarn from the Cozy Knitter. It's called Neapolitan and I really, really love it. It does remind me of Neapolitan ice cream, which I used to have when I was a kid. And it is so pretty. It comes with this beautiful mini for the heels, heels, cuffs, and toes. And I'm thinking of maybe doing two at a time. So I did try to split the yarn in half or cake it half and half. It is the color Neapolitan by the Cozy Knitter. And it is the Bliss Base, which is an 80-20 superwash merino and nylon blend. And I think this will just make a really sweet pair of socks. And I'm excited to get that one started. I have lots of socks that I'd like to make, but I'm really trying to tackle my whip basket, get any second socks done. So every time I finish a pair, um, I'm going to start a new pair and then I might actually grab another one that I have a second I need the second sock started so I might kind of toggle between a new pair and finish a pair and then a new pair and finish another pair because I do have quite a few um, socks started or single socks completed so that is my knitting I am really trying to stick to one or two projects until I can get 
few things done. And I also feel like I'm, I've been tackling some of my make nine projects that were from last year, from 2019. So I feel really good about that. And I'm excited about some new projects. I really want to start that decades wrap by nice and knit. And I've got another sweater lined up. So those are my knitting projects and my knitting plans. And um, I probably have to put all of this away now because I finally have to get some work done. Tuesday and I have spent most of today in my studio space doing lots and lots of sewing for some really fun projects coming up. I have something exciting that will be coming out at the end of March and I'm also starting to prepare for the Toronto Knitters Frolic which is at the end of April. I will have a booth there and so I'm starting to get super organized. I've been planning for a while but I'm just getting lots and lots of work done, which feels really good. And I'm kind of in a rush now because um, I'm gonna head out to pick up Camden from school again, and I'm going to pop into James's school because his grade is doing a lip sync today. So I'm really excited that I can pop in and check that out. But before I do that, I thought I would share just a couple of my favorite things because I've been loving some products lately and I always like sharing them. I know I shared this on Instagram, but I did want to share it again. I picked up or I ordered this beautiful lipstick from Origins. I don't know if they're kind of new. I think they're called Blooming Lipsticks. And this one is in the color Peach Petal. I'm wearing it today and I even put a tiny bit on my cheeks. And I just thought it was such a pretty peach color for spring. I also wanted to share a couple of my favorite products in my bathroom. I know the lighting is here in here is terrible, but um, I just have to share a couple of my favorite things. I discovered this sometime last year and I'm absolutely in love with it. It is the leave-in conditioner by, I don't know if that's pronounced way, I don't really know, but it works really, really great as a conditioner in my hair, but what I really love about it is the smell. I am obsessed with the smell. The day that I put this in my hair, I can smell it all day, and it makes me so, so very happy. I've also been in love with the L'Occitane Almond 
line. I've had their little hand lotion in almond in my purse for a while. And so I got this um, beautiful body cream and I'm really, really liking it. It's kind of a, actually it's a body balm, but it's really, really nice. And if you like the smell of almond products, you might like that. As for my skin, I have been using a few of the um, Kiehl's products because I had tried so many during Advent calendar time and I purchased a few after Christmas. So I'm really liking the whole Kiehl's brand, especially this Midnight Recovery Concentrate. I use this at night and it's really, really wonderful. And I'm also loving this Modern Friction from Origins. I've just, I've run out of a regular size. I'm onto a sample while I wait for another one to arrive. But this is really good if you have dry, dull winter skin. I think it's been helping my complexion quite a bit. So I just wanted to share those few things because I've been really, really loving them. I need to head out quickly to pick up Camden and go to James's school next. I'm home now and I had such a good afternoon after seeing the lip syncing concert. I got to see my nephew perform and James was amazing. He's got some moves and I wish I could share some video with you, but I can't. There were lots of other kids in it, so I can't be posting other kids online, but it was such a wonderful performance and a really nice afternoon. It made me so nostalgic. I got to see Camden's old kindergarten teacher and chat with her. She's not old, but you know what I mean? And it just made me realize that James is in grade eight. He's almost done at the school and it's kind of crazy how quickly they are growing up. So I'm home. My house is a little bit of a mess because it was so busy today. I didn't really tidy up the kitchen. So I'm going to do a bit of a cleanup and try to relax tonight, but I just got some happy mail and I really want to share that too. I have been stocking this Etsy shop for months and months. It is Kat Mamola and she does ceramics, these beautiful ceramic beads and gorgeous jewelry pieces. And I really wanted to get my hands on one of her ceramic bead necklaces. And she did an update last week and I could not decide between the two. So I got both, but they're really hard to get. So I'm trying not to feel guilty about getting two, but they are so beautiful. There is the name of her Etsy shop, Cat Mamola Ceramics. And I'm so excited to wear these. They are kind of a long chain. I'll probably wear one and um, post a picture of it, but I really, really love them. And the beads are so beautiful. I couldn't resist. <laughs> camera last night because it was a busy day and I had lots to catch up on and today I don't really have anything going on. I had an appointment this morning and I've got Camden home today um, 
And I've got March break to kind of start thinking about for next week. So I'm going to try and cram in some work today and tidy up a bit because there's a few things that I've been meaning to get to. And it's going to be a pretty uneventful rest of the day. I am going to do some work, but I'm also really going to try to block in some time for relaxation. I've just done a bit of a kitchen cleanup and I'm thinking ahead to dinner because I have lots of work to do today and I don't want to worry about it later. So I've got some shish kebabs marinating in the fridge right now and I've got some pita breads and I'm just thinking about what I can throw together to go with it tonight. So I pulled out one of my favorite newest cookbooks, the No Crumbs Left cookbook, which I've been sharing quite a bit on Instagram. So I don't know if you've seen all this already, but I really love this recipe for the marinated red onions. It's so delicious. And I've um, decided to marinate some right now so that we can have them with the shish kebabs or with salads and grilled meats this week. I've got my little onion, uh, marinated onion bowl here. This is a pottery piece from the No Crumbs Left website. It's so pretty, I really love it. So I'm going to make a batch of those. And I also got this gorgeous everything bowl, which is a bit bigger. It has like a handle on it. It's kind of like the marinated onion bowl, but really big. And this is the tie dyed color. It's so pretty and I love it because you can just mix stuff and it even looks pretty on my counter. So if I wanna leave it out and put fruit in it, I can totally do that. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. So I was having a quick flip through the book. So I'll make the onions. I think I might make a farro tomato and cucumber salad and mix it up in that bowl and then have that for tonight and also for the week. But I've been really enjoying this book. I made the fajita platter and that was really delicious. Uh, the salads in here, I think I shared them. They look so good. And I'm thinking about another one or two recipes in here for the week. So here's the fajita platter. That one turned out really good. Um, I think I wanna make the meatloaf recipe that's in here and then there's some potato roasties as well, which is one of my favorite ways to eat potatoes. They look so good. They're called potato pancakes in here. You just shred them and fry them, but I think the kids would like this too. So I'm really excited to try a few more recipes. Now that the weather is feeling a little bit nicer, I can go outside and barbecue and make some salads and just use these beautiful pieces. to film with dinner tonight, 
but I've cleaned up and I'm about to run a nice bubble bath and get into my pajamas and do some knitting and maybe watch some vampire diaries because inside I am just a teenager. So I think I'm going to call it now and say good night and thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.